وزكريا إذ نادى ربه رب لا تذرني فردا وأنت خير الوارثين فاستجبنا له ووهبنا له يحيى وأصلحنا له زوجه إنهم كانوا يسارعون في الخيرات إنهم كانوا يسارعون في الخيرات ويدعوننا رغبا ورهبا وكانوا لنا خاشعين Assalamu alaikum everybody. This is Dr. Haroon approaching you on behalf of uh, Chairman Scientific Committee of the Yarthafan 2020 and President Pakistan Society for Surgery of Hand. Uh, this is a very unfortunate, unprecedented time we are all facing, which has really made us upset regarding the scientific program of Orthocon 2020 and and also has placed a lot of disturbance on, on our social contacts. So in order to break this inertia, uh, we decided to approach you people through uh, video conferencing utilizing the software. And, and we will inshallah approach you regularly now uh, from the Arthocon and uh, Pakistan Society for uh, Surgery of Mind, like on on quarterly basis, and we have planned to conduct few webinars. And this is the first <coughs> first webinar of this series, uh, mainly addressing the uh, basal joint problem of the thumb, the metacarpophalangeal joint. So uh, we are facing some difficulty to connect to Pahabalpur with Professor. The scene and Chima. So, I plan to start my presentation first, uh, which is about the uh, thumb, <clears throat> the base of the first metacarpal fractures. <clears throat> so, I'm just uh, sharing my screen and we'll start my presentation. So I hope my voice and screen is now accessible to all of you clearly. So I apologize in advance for any, any problem with my internet speed. So the base of thumb really comprises of the, uh, the joint surfaces, which are uh, either can be called a universal joint or a double saddle joint. So it has a, both convex and concave surfaces. And, and if you see more clearly, this is a diagram which was um, very commonly shared by Professor Tehseen Chima and, and how the thumb joint moves. So he used to give us an example of a, of a vehicle which is riding over a hill and the path is curved. So that is how the thumb joint take a path while it is, it start moving from it, it uh, extended position to uh, a position while touching the little finger pulp to pulp. So, or, or he used to give us an example of a horse and a rider saddle riding on a horse uh, and the horse back has a scoliosis. I'm sure he will explain more when we will have him online. So, the different ligaments which connect to, uh, to the first metacarpal to the trapezium, the most important joint, because the thumb uh, metacarpal joint has a tendency 
so uh, to displace radially as well as dorsally so there is a need for a ligament which which runs from the ulnar side of the trapezium goes distally and attaches to the radial side of the first metacarpal on the volar side so this is the most important ligament which holds and prevents the subluxation of the first metacarpal from trapezium so other less important ligaments are dorsal radial ligament there is an intermetatarsal ligament and then there is a dorsal oblique ligament also so one can imagine the amount of forces transferred while making a pitch so so let us say if we have a force applied from index to thumb pulp which is equal to 1 kilogram it will be increased by 12 times so it will be transferred as a 12 kg and if we have a strong grip of like like 1 kg that will be transferred to many times maybe 10 10 fold to the mp joint so that is a that places the thumb in a very in a position of disadvantage to have a fracture at the base so this fragment where the palmar oblique ligament is attached is known as bennett fragment so either we will have a partial articular fracture when the thumb is loaded in the position of relative extension and abduction and the abductor will will pull it proximally where the thinar muscle will pull the metacarpal in a position of flexion and adduction similarly if there is an extra articular fracture of the base of the thumb the proximal fragment will be pulled by abductor into extension and and abduction and the proximal uh, or distal metacarpal will be pulled on the side of the other uh, to the side the other metacarpal in adduction as well as flexion so that is how the deforming forces will act and will will place the fracture in that angulation so, uh, classification is simple we can divide them into extra articular fractures partial articular fracture which is called bennett fracture and then rolando which is a complete articular in the shape of t or y fracture or there can be a community fracture of the base of metacarpal the extra articular fracture again can have two configuration one is transverse which is liable to be stable and stay in position after close reduction and thumb spike are caused. And then there is a is a oblique fracture, uh, which is a relatively unstable fracture and most of the time will require some time for fixation. So thumb metacarpal uh, will have 20 five percent of the all metacarpal fracture and among these 80 percent will involve the base of the base of the thumb uh, so among these the common fracture still involve uh, the extra uh, will have the extra articular configuration so we can have a, instead of AP, we can have a PA view, lateral view, and oblique view. And most of the time, most of the time, the uh, distraction views are very helpful to have a to have a complete configuration of the personality of fracture. And sometimes we do need CT scan, particularly to visualize the intra-articular impaction. So these are few maneuvers which will help you in close reduction. So longitudinal traction either with the help of finger trap or manually and then the thumb pushing the base uh, just to reverse the mechanism of injury. So most of these fracture can be approached surgically either by a palmer incision which can be extended uh, proximally along the along the tendon of the abductor pollicis longus or they can be curved towards the flexor carpi radialis so this picture shows the structure which can which are at risk 
of the uh, which are at risk during this surgical approaches particularly importance are our uh, sensory branches of the of the radial nerve and if you go more on the palmar side uh, towards the flexor carpi radialis then there is a palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve which can be at risk then the radial artery which which all of you know that it crosses through the anatomical snuff box and then enters into the two head of adductor adductor brevis uh, to enter into the palm so these are the structure which you need to take care during these surgical approaches so there is a palmar approach then it can be a dorsal biased approach which can be used to to approach these fracture so the dorsal approach will utilize the interval between the extensor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis extra articular fracture can be simple as i said uh, like oblique and transfer fracture or this can be comminuted and if the fracture angulation is more than 30 degrees so most of the time this will require close reduction and some form of fixation if if a close reduction and thumb spike cast is uh, is not uh, is not holding this fracture in position so close reduction as uh, i explained earlier can be by longitudinal traction and then then pushing the proximal part of the metacarpal with your thumb and and a k wire can be used to joystick as well as to fix the fracture in position and then we can have a thumb spike a cast to hold this in position so some of them may require internal fixation and then a pre contouring of the 2.4 or 2.7 mm locking plate is required to avoid the intra articular penetration of the screw as shown in this diagram and can achieve the fixation adequate stable fixation Bennett fracture is actually a fracture dislocation of the first metacarpal in which the Bennett fragment which has the attachment of the volar or palmar oblique ligament stays in place and the distal part of the metacarpal along with its uh, uh, partial part of the articular sur surface will subluxate dorsally as well as radially so the fragment A fragment can be of variable size pyramidal in shape and most of the time this is the volar and ulnar part of the articular surface which stays in place and of course the treatment will depend on the size of this fracture uh, so there are many method of treatment and uh, there is uh, no consensus on the on the best available technique for this fracture there used to be a non operative preferred treatment for this fracture then this fracture achieved controversy regarding the need for anatomical reduction so initial review of the literature showed us that the the radiological arthritis was a a common feature of na an anatomical reduction but this does not uh, does not have the symptoms of clinical symptoms of this of the arthritis related to non anatomical reduction and some some of the authors does report the more stable configuration by non anatomical reduction then later on other reports uh, explained the significant significant onset of uh, symptomatic arthritis when there was a gap of more than 1 uh, mm uh, when there was a step off of more than 1 mm and lipsley concluded that this fracture should not be managed non operatively because of the of the problems associated with non articular non congruent reduction so there are numerous technique which can be used to fix this fracture after close reduction you can have k wire when the fragment is too small so you can have a wire which which holds the joint in place it can be passed through the metacarpal to the trapezium 
this can have the configuration of intermetacarpal uh, uh, fixation, or then you can have either a trapezium metacarpal fixation and then inter intermetacarpal wire. So closed reduction and and uh, percutaneous fixation is suitable when the when the fragment is uh, having approximately 15 to 20 percent of the articular surface or then you can use the interfragment screw of 1.5 to 2 millimeter leg screw a 1 to 3 screw can be utilized depending on the size of fragment Then there is a complete articular fracture uh, described by Rolando. So these can have the orientation of either a T shape or a Y shape, or this can be a community fracture. Most of the time, the successful close reduction and percutaneous spinning is difficult to achieve or hold them the fragment in position. So usually a 2.7 or uh, 2.4 or 2.7 mm locking plate, T plate is utilized after open reduction and internal fixation of these fracture. So this is how you will achieve the fixation of interarticular fracture after open reduction and internal fixation. Then very community fracture can be fixed with the help of a suspension system. Uh, uh, which uh, which have an oblique wire in the metacarpal and then it is attached to an outrigger on outside uh, and and will have a thumb spike cast. So th there is a configuration of external fixation also which can be utilized this works on the two shan screw which which are anchored on the second metacarpal and they act as a suspension for the first metacarpal, you can distract them like distraction osteogenesis, and, and, and you can have the intra-articular interfragmentary K wire to hold the impacted fragment after reduction after choice TP. So this is how it will look like after a closed reduction and, and external fixation. At our institution, so very comminuted intraarticular fracture are you are fixed with the help of mini laser off which again works on the principle of a quadrangular external fixator the second metacarpal is used as a as a base and it acts as a suspension for the first metacarpal and under image intensifier we can observe the intraarticular congruity the this is after after uh, fixation. This is all a closed fracture and utilizes the smooth wire. The main advantage is the se uh, first post operative base start of range of motion. So this is an algorithm. I'm sure this is uh, may not be very clearly visible to you. You can you can have this algorithm to this article reference given here. And uh, you can you can have the detail of uh, description of this system through a textbook by Professor Chima. Uh, this is available both in hard copy and PDF format. I thank you very much for your attention. So we will entertain a question and answer at the end of uh, our presentation. I can see Professor Chima is online. Salam alaikum, sir. Salam alaikum, ji. Yeah, so, uh, let's go. Yeah, either jump. Yes, I'm sharing, so then you can share your presentation. I'm going to video and unmute.
वालेकुम जी वालेकुम सलाम तो शुरू करें हां जी बिल्कुल सर अच्छा ये जो वीडियो जी से वीडियो आ रही है आपके सामने अच्छा वो आ रही है तो मैं प्रेजेंटेशन करूं अपने गांव आप इन की वीडियो हां जी जी सर ये हां वो दोबारा से ओपन करके जांच हो जाएगी सर अच्छा इसको मैं अच्छा इसको मैं क्लोज करूं ये कहां से ये कहां से स्क्रीन शेयर स्क्रीन शेयर एक क्लिक करें इसे क्लिक करें नहीं बस जो स्टार्ट हो रहा है इस पर क्लिक करें दोबारा इसको एक एक क्लिक करो जहां से शेयर करें जिस तरह आप अपनी कंडीशन में अब आपके ऊपर स्क्रीन नजर आ रही है ये नजर आ रही है जी अरुण साहब अब पहली स्लाइड आ गई है नजर जी जी बिल्कुल आ गई वेरी क्लियर आवाज भी ठीक है जबरदस्त अच्छा सो टॉपिक असाइन टू मी इज ट्रपीजियो मेटाकॉर्पल जॉइंट एनाटॉमी एंड बायोमैकेनिक्स अब अरुण साहब ने बड़ी एक्चुअली मेहरबानी की है ये प्रोग्राम शुरू करके क्योंकि ये कोरोना सीजन ने हर किसी को घर में बिठा दिया शेर है कि अजीब मर्द है जिसकी दवा है तनहाई बकाए शहर है अब शहर के उजड़ने तो अंडर द सरकम आई थिंक दिस इज अ ग्रेट एक्टिविटी which will allow us to slowly get back to normal life and normal activity and some academic activity to shuru karte hain trapezio metacarpal joints you are all familiar that this is uh, uh, called uh, a saddle joint saddle is uh, on the trapezial uh, side and uh, horseman is uh, first metacarpal concept is that there is a concavity a reciprocal concavity and convexity like trapezium is a concave in anteroposterior plane and convex in radio ulnar plane and uh, reciprocally uh, metacarpal is uh, a concave and convex in uh, other planes so that becomes a universal joint and universal joint allow you flexion extension adduction abduction and uh, circumduction which is a very special feature of the thumb that's why we need this joint so we will uh, show you some basic features of it and at me how it becomes unstable and how it becomes stable and then some biomechanics and uh, some detail about the special movement of the thumb which is a rotation or opposition you see this is the saddle and uh, this is a uh, concave in anteroposterior plane and it would be convex in other plane this is important to realize that there is a little uh, recess here to receive this beak of the uh, first metacarpal on the volar side we'll come to the importance of this recess and this beak how this uh, helps to make the joint stable if you take x ray you see trapezium looks there's a concavity it looks like a saddle and this looks in ap plane 
and uh, metacarpal has convexed. On lateral plane, this uh, trapezium is convex and first metacarpal is concave, just to match it. Just to, even if you don't believe in evolution, still it is useful to compare the hand of human being and that of chimpanzee. There are significant differences between the uh, two, especially trapezium metacarpal joint, and that has given advantage to the human being in their struggle for survival of the fittest. Just to look at the thumb, chimpanzee thumb is smaller. It uh, reaches only MP joint of, uh, of the index finger. And uh, let's see the difference in the trapezium and uh, trapezium first metacarpal joint. We call it saddle joint, but human trapezium metacarpal joint is, looks like that of English saddle. If you're familiar with the different shapes of the saddle, this is English saddle, this is shallow, there is a smooth curve, not very deep. So joint is not very stable. Inherently, it is relatively unstable. Compared to chimpanzees, there's a deep, it is more like Turkish saddle or Western saddle. It's uh, deep and stable. There are advantages and disadvantages. As human joint becomes more unstable, this allows you more movement. Chimpanzees uh, trapezium metacarpal joint is, uh, trapezium is deeper. So joint is relatively more stable inherently, but at the same, same time less mobile. So one has to sacrifice one thing for the other. So this joint is unique for its uh, mobility and also the mechanism for stability. <clears throat> its uh, anatomy has been made complex by different terminology over the year which have been used for the ligament. If there are three or four main ligaments, the people have identified some 16 ligaments which uh, act on this joint. There's a very well-known ligament called anterior oblique ligament. Hands call it anterior oblique, Arnold calls it medial, Kaplan calls it ulnar, and then colleague calls it radiovolar. So you will find all these uh, terms in the literature. Uh, similarly, Posterior oblique ligament, you are all probably familiar with that. Uh, that is the terminology of hand, but Zancoli would call it dorsal ligament. So there is some uh, terminology, but uh, I think I will slowly take you to the modern terminology, which has become almost universal and relative importance of the ligaments. <clears throat> Four ligaments are actually really important. This ligament is not mentioned much, but I think this is one of the key ligaments. Human literature kind of underestimates its importance. That's a ligament between first and second metacarpal. For the for generations, uh, the ligament reconstruction which we do in early stages of trapezium metacarpal uh, arthritis, uh, that uh, littler uh, uh, procedure using half of the flexor carpi radialis. And people thought and they've been claiming that they are reconstructing anterior oblique ligament. But when you will look, I think probably some other speaker will show you uh, the technique of that uh, operation. You will uh, realize that is not nearly close to the uh, trajectory of anterior oblique ligament. That is actually reconstructing this intermetacarpal ligament. Once you see the pictures of the uh, technique of that operation, you will realize that that uh, mistake has been uh, perpetuated for many decades now. Okay. So this is one important ligament. Its main job is to prevent uh, movement of the first metacarpal away from the second metacarpal. A kind of radial and dorsal subluxation. That's the main and is a very, very strong ligament. There is anterior set of ligament, called anterior oblique ligament, takes origin from the trapezium, goes in a kind of oblique fashion to the first metacarpal. Uh, 
Traditionally, that has been called the most important ligament, especially with the work of Pellegrini, he implicated degeneration of this ligament as a starting point uh, for degenerative arthritis. But I will show you, what do they say? People don't this ligament is not that important. It's not even that strong. It, uh, it is tight only in a hitchhiker position. In a stable position, when one is using uh, uh, the thumb in a strong pinch, this ligament has very little role and very little uh, uh, role in the stability of the thumb. <clears throat> but I think it's important in uh, mechanism of rotation, which uh, this provides a counter uh, force to the rotating force of uh, uh, set of muscles. Uh, we'll come to that later. Other important complex of ligament is the dorsal. And all recent literature uh, stresses the importance and uh, robustness of the dorsal complex. Uh, there are two ligaments. One is the dorsal radial part and the other is the posterior oblique ligament, which uh, goes in an oblique direction and attaches to the almost volar side of the first metacarpal. This is much stronger ligament, has uh, much more uh, proprioceptive uh, uh, nerve endings and uh, is related to uh, uh, the stability during the pinch and also resist the dorsal subluxation and dislocation. So this is the most important ligament complex in addition to the intermetacarpal ligament. So what's the summary? There are four ligaments which are important. These are the most strong ligament, intermetacarpal, dorsal uh, set of ligaments, which are actually two ligaments. And there is a volar oblique ligament. Even if you cut the volar uh, uh, anterior oblique ligament, your joint doesn't sublux. It will sublux or dislocate when you cut the dorsal ligament. Even then, if intermetacarpal ligament is intact, it might sublux, but it will, it will not move away from the first, uh, uh, second metacarpal. So that is the relative importance of the ligaments. I will show you some uh, detail of that. This is intermetacarpal ligament between second and uh, first metacarpal. And you see this is a very strong ligament. This will prevent movement of the first metacarpal away from the second metacarpal. Uh, you see, this is a, what people call a volar beak ligament, a deeper part of the anterior oblique ligament. And Pellegrini has made this ligament the most important. You see, when thumb is in a relaxing position, this is a very loose ligament, not giving you any stability. Uh, this is tight only in a hitchhiker position or the thumb when thumb is uh, moved uh, maximally to the uh, radial side, like this position. That's when this will become tight. <clears throat> See, when, uh, when it's using the strong pinch, this anterior black ligament becomes relatively loose and it is relatively thin ligament. And no, it does not have uh, many proprioceptive nerve endings. This works in uh, conjunction with the thinner muscle which have a lot of proprioceptive endings. The, now you see the, how the dorsal ligament becomes important. And in a, this is a stable position. And uh, this is almost like, uh, like the knee, uh, final uh, uh, school home mechanism. That uh, this, uh, now you see this beak of the first meta, uh, metacarpal that uh, fits into the recess over the polar aspect of the trapezius and your dorsal ligament is the main ligament which provides you the stability. This is, you see, in a relaxed position, in a resting position, this ligament is loose. This is your dorsal ligament, but when a, in a strong pinch, you see this fits into the, this recess 
and your dorsal ligament becomes tight and that provides you the stability. This is that uh, volar black ligament is relatively thin. You can even see the instrument under the ligament is not very th thick ligament. And you see it will be tight only in a hitchhiker position, not in position of uh, strong pinch, strong lateral pinch. This is your dorsal ligament complex, has uh, two parts to it. And you see, this is a very robust and strong ligament. And in position of uh, lateral strong pinch, this, is, uh, this becomes tight, and that is source of your stability. And this is again intermetacarpal ligament. And uh, that is the ligament actually you reconstruct in uh, literal Eaton procedure of uh, ligament reconstruction. Good to know that uh, power graph can uh, generate up to 120 kilogram force uh, at the, the trapezometacarpal joint, and that's a huge uh, force. This is almost a 12 time. And let's say if your pinch is uh, producing a, a force of uh, 10 kilogram, that would be multiplied by 12 times at the trapezium metacarpal joint. And now you see how much force is applied to that joint during the pinch and why there, there is so much arthritis of that joint. Shear force is multiplied by 2.5 times at the trapezium metacarpal joint. So whenever that force is applied, there is a tendency for uh, subluxation. These are some of the basic uh, 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 kinematics at the uh, trapezium metacarpal joint. So dorsal ligament becomes the most important and resist uh, these forces. These are the muscles which act at the trapezium metacarpal joint. There are four extrinsic and five intrinsic. A lot of muscle work on this small joint. What are the extrinsic? Your flexor pollicis longus, which causes a flexion. And uh, your extensor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, and abductor pollicis longus. Those are the four extrinsic muscles. There are five uh, intrinsic muscles, three of thinner area. Your abductor pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis, uh, opponent's pollicis, uh, adductor pollicis and first dorsal intrinsic. Those are the five intrinsic muscles which act on this joint. Why they, uh, we need those, those many muscles? Because it's a complex uh, movement. Uh, the most important movement is opposition, which is rotation. And when you see the uh, opposition, at the start it is your thumb is on the side of the fingers, then it has to abduct radially and volarly it has to adduct across the palm, it has to flex, and in the process, it has to rotate. It is a very complex movement. That's why you need so many muscles. Uh, so when we reconstruct uh, by opponent's plasty, we are asking one tendon transfer to perform the job of maybe five or six muscles. So it's never true replica of, we are pretty close to it, but never, uh, close to full opposition. That's very interesting to see that uh, we say that thumb rotates from uh, uh, retroposition to opposition, it rotates. But try it uh, in, on your own, uh, that it doesn't spin like uh, you will spin uh, a, a pen or pencil in your hand. Let's see, it doesn't uh, spin it, uh, try to spin it. Your first metacarpal doesn't spin. It's quite uh, stable there. So uh, how it rotates, it does rotate, but how it uh, rotates, and that's a very interesting mechanism. We say that uh, it's a trapezium, uh, it is a saddle joint, but you should realize the horse which is wearing that saddle that has scoliosis. This curvature, this path over which uh, that first metacarpal has to travel, that has a curvature like this. Imagine a hilltop over which a truck is uh, passing. There's a passage which has a curvature. So as the truck moves, you see it rotates. Here it is facing that way, 
when truck is here, it is facing this way. And when it uh, descends, it is facing now the other direction. So rotation occurs, but it is obligatory to the movement. If hum does not move, there's no rotation. That's why literal says that you have to reproduce only abduction of the thumb, function of abductor pollicis brevis, and rotation will occur automatically. It is obligatory to the movement of the thumb. Thumb has to move forward, then it will rotate. If it's static, it will not move. So that's the very key point to understand that how rotation occurs. For this movement to occur, there is a force couple. And I think that's my concept that why, what's the importance of anterior black ligament. That holds one end of this uh, sphere and uh, extensor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, and that is pulling in the other direction. So this causes the supination. For pronation, one ligament hold it there and uh, your thinner muscle pull it to the other direction to cause the pronation. And that is, I think, the force mechanism of uh, opposition. But uh, primarily, there's the osseous anatomy which facilitate movement of the thumb and the rotation. We looked into that, uh, that uh, mechanism of rotation and also amount of rotation. When we looked into the literature, all kind of figures were uh, there. That uh, thumb rotates from full supination to full pronation uh, from 20 to 120 degrees. Uh, Dr. Nadeem Chima, Rao Tayyab, uh, two of our residents, they worked on this and uh, this is what they did. A very nifty, intriguing experiment that when they looked at the thumb, thumb was already rotated. Uh, all the books say that in position or retro position, thumb is lying in the uh, plane of the finger, which is obviously not true. This is the position of the rest. What we did, they took a CT scan picture right at the level of the two sesamoid, which will give us the orientation of the thumb metacarpal. And when you draw a line to measure an angle with a fixed unit, that is second and third metacarpal, even in position of uh, retro position, there is a 50 to 60 degree rotation of the thumb metacarpal in reference to the fixed unit. And as the thumb moves across in position of uh, opposition, right down to the little finger, this further rotates about 50 to 60 degrees. So total rotation from the position of the fingers becomes close to 110 to 120 degrees. The, this, is, this was experiment. These are the sesamoid. This is a fixed unit. This line tells us the position of the first metacarpal. These are the two sesamoid. And these are uh, lines drawn in every position of uh, rotation. So <clears throat> from the retro position, thumb further rotates about 50 to 60 degrees. Now, something about uh, this angle of slope of the trapezium. This is almost like uh, acetabular index. You see, this makes an angle of, uh, this is the second metacarpal, normal angle if you draw this line and this line. That is about 125 degrees. And it, if it will come uh, flat, John will, will become more unstable. If it is uh, less flat, this angle is less, then John would be more stable. Uh, based on this concept, this is almost like uh, this uh, uh, bis uh, bicycle seat. If it's more vertical, a uh, rider will tend to slip down. A uh, rider is the first metacarpal. Normal angle is about 125 to 130 degree. If this angle is uh, more, obviously, situation would be unstable. So this gives you some concept that possibly in early stages of the uh, joint problem, we can increase the stability by, in, uh, by decreasing this angle. And that can be done two ways. And there are two procedures available based on this concept. Uh, we did some uh, lab studies that if we do an ostotomy of the trapezium and raise this articular surface of the trapezium maybe 15, 20 degrees, 
how much uh, stability that will uh, impart. So this was a concept, and uh, this was published in uh, Journal of Hand Surgery, that we created a uh, osteotomy, lifted this up, put a little wedge there, and then stress the joint again. <clears throat> so that, uh, this was an experiment. This was the result of the experiment, that this uh, osteotomy reduced the tendency for uh, subluxation by about 70% and shifted the stress from ulnar side to the radial side. Ulnar side is where, uh, ulnar and volar side is where arthritis starts. So if you can shift the stress to the radial side, that will give more uh, years to your trapezium metacarpal joint. So you see, this is uh, one thing we measured, this uh, amount of subluxation on stressing, and once after the osteotomy, this tendency, yeah, this distance was reduced by about 70%. Similarly, the stress was uh, measured in four quadrants, and there was significant shift of the stress from the ulnar volar side to the dorsal radial side. <clears throat> so this was our conclusion that uh, this, is, this is a possible treatment for in early stages of CMC arthritis and will cause, uh, will uh, increase some stability. Based on the same concept, it is almost like hip joint, whether uh, you can cause a stability either by working on acetabular side, like in CDH we do, or you can do the femoral osteotomy. There is an operation available called first metacarpal extension osteotomy. When you ex uh, make this extension osteotomy, cut this wedge and uh, fix it in hyperextension position, that also makes because for functional position some as to then flex, and that will uh, uh, stabilize the trapezium metacarpal joint by tensioning the, your dorsal ligament complex. So you can do uh, osteotomy in early stages either on the metacarpal side or on trapezial side. So. This is some um, basic about anatomy and some biomechanics. We started uh, with the uh, verse about Corona, and I think I would like to share with you a couple of more uh, verses about the, about the Corona. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Sir. Thought provoking. Are you staying, sir, or you're leaving? Agar fauri koi anatomy ke baare mein hai, to mera khala hume to entertain kar lena chahiye. Ho sakta hai mujhe jana pade. Otherwise, I will try to stay. You are your hair are looking like but go more grayish but much more uh, graceful. Thank you, sir. Uh, it was really entertaining and refreshing. Uh, Enjoy Kartiam, Apitaku. Basically, after the thinking, I have conceptual appeal. As a little bit of water, so many to both are clear. Very clear of that. Ake the Ostatni, a Yepelibiman, a base, a trapezium case. Ye could be popular to you, sir. Halakin literature may describe the Apnikia. Look, a second, I was gorgeous. I had gorgeous. Please go ahead. I was saying that the early stage, stage 1 stage 2, early stage 2, subluxation shuru ho jati hai, aur logon ka jo pain hai, base hota hai, aur wo mostly ye kehte hai ki at the time of jo lateral pinch hai, us waqt hume zyada hota hai, ya bottle open karne ke, close to karne ke, aur wo joint sublux ho raha hota hai, so early conservative treatment fail ho jata hai, to mostly log jo hai, wo base of osteotomy, uh, metacarpal base ki osteotomy karke, closing that jo, 
को थर्टी डिग्री वो उसकी ज्यादा बात करते हैं हाँ वो चूंकि लिटरेचर में मौजूद है उसका कॉन्सेप्ट ये है कि जब वो एफर एक्सटेंड कर लेंगे ना उसको तो फंक्शनल पोजीशन में उसको फ्लेक्शन में लाना पड़ेगा जब आप फ्लेक्शन में लाएंगे तो डॉर्सल लेगामेंट टाइट हो जाएगा एंड दैट विल क्रिएट स्टेबिलिटी एग्जैक्टली तो मेरा सिर्फ ये जो अगर हम ट्रेपीजियल साइड पे करें वो लिटरेचर में बहुत कम है वो कपान जी का एक आर्टिकल है उसके कुछ सात केसेस हैं हमारा आर्टिकल तो खैर लैब बेस्ड था तो लेकिन उसका कांसेप्ट मुझे इससे ज्यादा साउंड लगता है कि यू आर एक्चुअली एड्रेसिंग द फ्लैटनेस ऑफ ट्रेपीजियम यू आर नॉट लाइंग ऑन लिगामेंट जैसे हम ऐसे टैबलर इंडेक्स कम करते हैं ऊपर ऐसे पेम्बर्टन करके या साल्टर करके तो एक्चुअल हम एनेटमी उसकी इसकी उसको हम एसिटेबलो प्लास्टिक कहते हैं कि वो आपने एसिटेबलम को मोर कंग्रूएंट कर दिया या मोर स्टेबल कर दिया तो कॉन्सेप्ट तो ये ये है अब चूंकि लिटरेचर में उस स्टेज में एक तो मसला ये है क्यों आर्टिकल ज्यादा नहीं है उस इसके एक तो उस स्टेज पे मरीज आम तो मरीज को ऑपरेशन की जरूरत नहीं होती हम एक किस्म का प्रोफिलेक्टिक कर रहे होते हैं मरीज कहता है मैं मामूली दवाई लूं या थोड़ी सी सप्लेंट पैन हो तो मेरा गुजारा हो रहा है तो मैं ऑपरेशन क्यों करूं ऑपरेशन उसी वक्त करवाता है जब इस स्टेट से आगे गुजर, गुजर चुका होता है क्योंकि मरीज हमारे कहने पे तो राजी नहीं होता मरीज को तो राजी करती है पेन <laughs> सही है <laughs> अब मैं वही सोच रहा था कि ये आप भी काफी इस पे करते हैं तो हमें देखना ही चाहिए कि एक्सरे के व्यू पे जहां में फ्लैट लगे और पेशेंट एग्री करे तो उस वक्त हमें मेरा ख्याल है कि ये जो इंटरमेटाकार्पल डिस्टेंस भी अगर आप देखते हैं तो इसमें जहाँ फ्लैटनेस होती है सब लक्सेशन हो रही होती है वहां पे और ये बिकॉज ऑफ फ्लैटनेस ऑफ आर्टिकुलर सर्फेस ऑफ ट्रेपीजियम उस स्टेज पे ओपन में जॉब स्टैटनी अगर इसकी है तो आई प्रज्यूम इट वुड बी बेनिफिशियल लेकिन इसको मेरा ख्याल करना चाहिए मेरे पास भी आए तो करना चाहिए ये प्रोसीजर है प्रोफिलेक्टिक खास तौर लिगा मैं रिकंस्ट्रक्शन भी अभी आर्थराइटिस इतनी नहीं हुई लेकिन जॉइंट सब लक्स हो रहा है और उस वक्त उसको अगर थोड़ी बहुत दर्द है तो हमें ऑफर दूर करना चाहिए लिगा मैं रिकंस्ट्रक्शन और वन ऑफ दीस आर स्टार्टमीस एग्जैक्टली थैंक यू और आदमी साहब कभी बालपुर आना नहीं हुआ नहीं सर बहुत पुराना तो बहुत कमी हो गया आपने तो मुकम्मल हिजरत कर ली है हाँ, हाँ, अमेरिका में कई लोग कहते हैं जी हम कई दफा बात होती है कि आप अमेरिका में क्यों बैठे हो कहते हैं हम हिजरत करके आए तो मैं उनको वो एक शेर सुनाता हूँ इफ्तार अरब का कि शिकम की आग है लिए फिर रही है शहर बशहर शिकम की आग है लिए फिर रही है शहर बशहर सगे जमाना है हम क्या हमारी हिजरत क्या बिल्कुल सही है तो अगली तो मौका ना ये जरा कोरोना ठीक होता तो चक्कर लगाए जरा बिल्कुल सर लगाएंगे मैं तो यही सोच रहा था कि अभी हारून साहब ने दो हफ्ते बाद कंप्रेशन जीरो पैसे रखी है तो मैं सोच रहा था कि सीरीज हम एवरी टू वीक्स पे क्यों ना कर ले तो एक दफा हम फ्लेक्सेस को कर लें फिर सॉफ्ट टिश्यू इंजरी है तो अगर हम यहाँ से कुछ करना चाहें तो आप इसी तरह कोऑर्डिनेट कर लेंगे जी जी वही है मैं समझता हूँ वो आप वहाँ से करना चाहें तो क्योंकि आपके पास ये टेक्नोलॉजी कल हेल्प बेहतर है जी जी तो अगर जी. मैंने कुछ करना हुआ तो फिर आपसे और हरून से कोआर्डिनेट कर लेंगे हम ये सोच रहा था इस साल शायद आठ सौ काम तो पता नहीं मुझे नहीं लगता कि पॉसिबल होगी क्योंकि जो हालात हैं तो मैं यही सोच रहा हूँ शोल्डर पे भी जो मुझे दिन में उन्होंने कुछ लगाया है और हैं तो अभी हम हर दो दो किसी ने कहा कि हमें तो मर्ग नहीं खौफ है मर्ग ने मार दिया अभी तो घर पे कह दो बैठे हुए बिल्कुल ऐसे ही जो फ्यूचर प्रोग्राम है जस्ट लेट मी नो आई विल बी ग्लैड टू पार्टिसिपेट मैंने आपको व्हाट्सएप पे सर नेक्स्ट पोस्टर भेज दिया है और हां जी इंशाल्लाह आफ्टर 2 वीक्स कंप्रेशन न्यूरोपैथी एंड देन वी विल वी विल हैव इंशाल्लाह टेंडन ट्रांसफर जो आपका है ना लेक्चर उसके बाद इंशाल्लाह उसके बाद इंशाल्लाह फिर प्रवेश साहब को शोल्डर के लिए बड़ा थैंक यू सर थैंक यू अगेन फॉर स्पेंडिंग सम टाइम अगला प्रवेश साहब का है सर ऑन आर्थराइटिस एंड सर्जिकल ट्रीटमेंट
बेसिकली मेरी जो स्टॉक है वो तो सर आपने बहुत ही आसान कर दी है करने और Initially, I thought I will talk about uh, a bit about anatomy, then etiology, stages of PMCR cycle, and various surgical treatment options. But uh, listening to the talk of uh, my professor, my life has become much more easier, and I will actually I have rather actually <laughs> deleted those slides in the meantime when uh, you were actually delivering that talk. So uh, everybody knows that the thumb is in a position because of its unique. Uh, anatomic configuration, which places it into uh, in such a position that it can perform motion in various ways, and it's it has a great mobility uh, because of intrinsic osseous anatomy and joint configuration. And I will not go into the detail. Doctor Tassin has elaborated very well about the anatomy, about volar and dorsal ligaments. Uh, the basic principle is that it has a high functional demand, which requires a stable And a mobile joint. Um, for that, we, uh, Dr. Tassin, has discussed about the knot. I will uh, briefly talk about uh, epidemiology. We know that CMC arthritis is much more common in Caucasian as compared to the Asian. And the various cadaveric studies they have shown that 50% of Caucasians they have an osteoarthritis as compared to 8% of the Asian. And Another fact is that almost every 12th woman will have an osteoarthritis of the thumb, as compared to the fourth woman, the uh, fourth man. And if we look at that, the incidence of osteoarthritis in the female especially increases with an aging, especially in the sixth and seventh decade, and with increasing incidence of an osteoporosis. Now, it is a predominantly disease of females, but we do see a curve to males also, and it's. The female to male ratio, which has been described in the literature, it is it varies from 6 to 1 to 12 to 1, and even the rate of surgical intervention is from 4 to 1, uh, considering female to male. And most of the people they come in the sixth and the seventh decade for the surgical intervention. Uh, if we look at its etiology, Dr. Harun also talked about intraarticular fracture. Uh, people they have considered that the genetics does play some role. Then the trauma, but the two main uh, factors. This is a intrinsic osseous anatomy, that joint being a superficial sagittal shaped joint, and the other thing is subsequently the functional demand of a uh, person puts the joint in a stress where there is a ex excessive laxity of its ligaments, and that actually initiates a part of an osteoarthritis. But still, exact cause is not known. We have heard uh, Dr. Tassin. Describing about the function of inferior oblique ligament, many people they have thought this is the main stabilizing agent, but it's not actually. It helps in only in the rotation and position of the thumb, especially in opposition. Uh, while ligamentous instability is due to uh, various factors, people they have described that uh, partly it is a structure and partly it is because of its poor innervation, especially proprioception. And dorsal ligaments, as, as you have heard, that they are very well developed, they are thick, and they are very well innervated by the mechanical receptors, and there is a very good organized ligament issue. On the other hand, the volar ligaments, they are thin, not very well developed, and they are poorly innervated, especially they lack uh, mechanical receptors and proprioceptors. <clears throat> Inferior oblique ligament. I will not go into the detail. Uh, Dr. Tassin has elaborated about it, but this is the ligament which actually helps in the position and the rotation of the thumb. Uh, that's actually by concept which Dr. Tassin has elaborated. And if you look at those ligament, although people they have described arthroscopically almost 16 ligaments, but the major ligaments on the dorsal side, they are dorsal oblique, dorsal uh, <coughs> lateral ligaments, dorsal radial ligaments, and the dorsal trapezius metacarpal ligament. Which are very thick and very well developed. Apart from this, is the inferior metacarpal ligament, which is the main stabilizing agent. Uh, it's and positioning of thumb actually is very important. Volar uh, ligaments. We know that there are two important volar ligaments: inferior oblique and inferior annulus lateral ligaments. It's relatively thin ligament, uh, not very well uh, uh, 
uh, innervated by the nerve fibers, uh, but its function is very, very important. Now, histologically, it has also been seen that uh, it's a hypocellular and poorly innervated ligament. Now, if you look at the articular surface, we know that it's saddle shape, superficial saddle shape, and it is just like a scoliotic back of a horse, which as Dr. Tassin has elaborated. And it actually provides a good position of the thumb in all in three planes. And <clears throat> that uh, fill for your functional demands during the routine activity. Now, functional demands, if you look at that, most of the time it is a pinch, latent pinch, which we commonly use then a grass phenomena and then holding objects opening the jaw the bottle in those three positions if you look at that what happens there is a stress over uh, the trapezium metacarpal ligament axial load and along with an axial rotation there is a much more stress over the volar side of this ligament and this grasping and pinch function of the hand actually involves all these three arc of motion especially flexion extension abduction and opposition and that this uh, shallow saddle shaped surface of a joint actually with the help of intrinsic osseous uh, stability uh, puts a lot of stress over its uh, surrounding uh, anatomic structure and th those are the ligaments and then these especially dorsal ligaments actually helps it becomes hard and it prevents uh, the under uh, subluxation or translation of that base of metacarpal but during this motion, uh, very needing of opposition and axial rotation, we know that axial rotation actually puts a lot of shear forces across the two articular surfaces. That is the base of metacarpal and over the trapezial, especially on the volar side. And this compression force and the shearing forces causes uh, striation, fibrillation within the articular cartilage. Ultimately, it leads to a wear. And this is diagrammatic illustration. And here you can see uh, on the volar side, there is a lot more stress, especially in the flexion and eviction uh, uh, element of hand when we are performing the routine activity. And in routine activity, we know that those three grass, little things, they are the most common. Uh, this is another diagram which shows actually uh, the stress areas during these three positions, especially in the little pinch, grass, and opening up the jaw. And once the stress actually increases beyond a certain limit, then ultimately articular cartilage undergoes wear and tear and it leads to an early osteoarthritis. And we know that there are various steps which are involved in the joint destruction. Excessive laxity and repetitive loading, it leads to an articular wear and tear. And slowly and gradually, when the joint space reduces, wear and tear increases, then the secondary osteophyte formation occurs. And with the passage of time, then the dorsal radial subluxation starts. Up. Now, <clears throat> the other thing which it has been seen uh, from the specimen which have been derived from those patients who had <laughs> stage three and stage four trapezio metacarpal arthritis, and just retrieving at those uh, whole trapezium uh, in total, uh, you can see what are the different pattern of changes it has been observed in an osteoarthritic and in a normal trapezium. So if you look at this uh, in 36 specimen, and out of that, there were 27 females, nine males, and age range was from 33 to 76. There were three pattern of uh, articular change they were noted. One was a saddle shape, in which almost uh, the saddle shape surface of trapezium was retained. The other was a dish type in which articular surface, it was damaged in such a way it formed a dish. And the third was a surge type. And the various uh, percentage in these condition, it was seen that the retained concave, uh, concave convex articular surface was maintained. There was a partial destruction of articular cartilage and only there were three osteophytes that were formed. This is uh, the kind of uh, scene. It was seen, uh, uh, degenerative changes almost in 47% of cases that was seen. Now, the other pattern, it was just like a mortar and pestle, uh, uh, I mean, uh, pattern, where there was a complete destruction of articular cartilage, and the whole articular surface of the trapezium, which was a piece, it was almost a dish shape. And there was a peripheral rimming osteophytes, they actually further exaggerated this form of 
uh, 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 pattern of a dish shape because when the peripheral ossified form, this dish pattern becomes much more prominent. And the third one, the last, which was uh, with the volar eroded concave faces for the FCR, it retained some of the convexity on the dorsal lateral side, half on the volar side, it was basically eroded, and this pattern was named as the cirque type of the pattern. So these are the different key patterns of a degenerative changes in which the trapezium was received, it was seen. So we know that the internal lateral initially described uh, based on Kelgren and Lawrence uh, degenerative changes, although nowadays people would believe that these uh, stages of degenerative osteoarthritic changes we do not correlate with our clinical symptoms and we cannot actually make a, a baseline as a treatment algorithm for such kind of an osteoarthritic change. So, look at this uh, stage one, uh, uh, sorry, stage zero, where there is a little synovitis on pain at the base of thumb, uh, which is coming from the uh, uh, trapezium metacarpal joint, but you will not see any radiological changes. In a stage one, you can see here there are some radiological changes, especially there is some subcondyl sclerosis, but hardly there is any joint space narrowing. In stage two, you see that uh, the distance between the first and second metacarpal starts increasing, there is some subluxation and reduced joint space formation of osteophyte. And the subluxation, which was described, it was less than one third of a base of metacarpal. In stage three, it is almost full fledged osteoarthritic changes uh, in which reduced gland space, osteophyte formation, subcondyl sclerosis, and subluxation was more than one third of a base of metacarpal. And stage four, we know that it is involving the whole trapezium, and scaphoid trapezium gland is also involved. And we can see here. Stage three and stage four, the hallmark is there is an increased distance between the first and second metacarpal uh, bases. So it means there is a stretch over this intermetacarpal ligament. Although the ligament is intact, but it is stretched out, in especially in stage three and stage four condition. So the differential diagnosis, as we know that the decurvin disease from first, then the scapulinate advanced flat. K5 fracture, K4 trapezial arthritis, and carpal tunnel. And then many times when we are treating this uh, CMC joint arthritis, we have to do one or other procedure at the same time. Uh, what are the treatment options? Uh, conservatively, we know that the splinting, non steroid and anti inflammatory injections, they are helpful, especially in a stage zero and stage one. But if they do not improve stage wise, we actually progress toward the local steroid injection. People, they have also tried a local hyaluronic acid injection, but I did not have an experience of putting any hyaluronic acid in skin to joint. Maybe uh, uh, Dr. Tassim may elaborate if he has an experience. But the only thing which uh, I have seen uh, people doing arthroscopic redeemment and synovectomy in a stage one. and uh, if there is a uh, little subluxation and they think that uh, the joint is really becoming unstable, first metatotal osteotomy, that can be considered. Now, in a early uh, osteoarthritis, osteotomy almost 8 to 10 millimeters above the base of uh, articular surface with a 30 degree extension, it is helpful, and the people who have opted various. Uh, kind of a fixation like the osteotomy. It's a closing wedge osteotomy which can fix, you can fix it with a K-wire or one can fix it with a, uh, with a plate and screw also. And that stabilizes the joint and takes up the load over the volar aspect of uh, the joint and ultimately symptoms and the pain is produced with this kind of an osteotomy. But usually it is helpful in a stage one or stage two. Uh, then comes in a stage two, uh, nowadays, many hand surgeons who have an arthroscopic expertise and with a small arthroscope of 2 mm, they do an arthroscopic synovectomy, redeeming, removal of osteophyte, and they talk about a reconstruction of inferior oblique ligament. And actually, it's not an inferior oblique ligament. Uh, the way it is reconstructed, either with the slip of FCR 
art of people, they have also tried with one of the slip of uh, extensor polyphic longus terminals. So it is a reconstruction of uh, basically intermeta uh, carpal ligament, uh, intermeta uh, uh, metacarpal ligament, bringing the base of first metacarpal almost at the level of uh, second metacarpal base. And that takes off a lot of actually load and then it reduces the subluxation. Uh, some other people, they also consider that at this stage, one can go with a ligament reconstruction and central interposition, and commonly uh, we familiar with the most popular procedure, which we call LRT. Uh, okay. And ligament reconstruction, as it was described, it is again with the radial slip, and you can see it brings the base of first metacarpal at the level of base of second metacarpal. And it is almost reconstruction of this intermetacarpal uh, ligament, not actually inferior bleed ligament. And if it is combined with the uh, bereavement and synovectomy, people will do a little tight layer of inferior capsule, which actually addresses the inferior bleed ligament also if it is a less. Now, in a stage T, so the treatment of choice, especially in stage T. So how this is uh reconstructing intermetacarpal ligament and not the oblique, uh, red, uh, oblique uh, ligament as people claim. Yeah. Was that diagram? Yeah, yeah, diagram. This is the diagram. You see, it's see how this is uh, reconstructing the intermetacarpal ligament. Or we are anterior oblique ligament reconstruct kar rahe. So this ligament can be reconstructed. This is the one way other people, they have actually taken because there are a better policy longer as a three slip. They have taken one slip and they have reversed actually in that, making a tunnel and bringing across it. So, uh, uh, and some people, they have also used a free Palmaris longus tendon also. But it is actually bringing the base of first metacarpal at the level of base of second metacarpal. So that is the most important ligament. If you tighten up this ligament adequately and after actually your repair or reconstruction, you perform a stress test and do the motion in all planes of range of motion, you will see that there is no subluxation. So it is not actually reconstruction of interior big ligament. So as I said, if you combine this reconstruction with the cytovectomy and with the debitment, removal of, of peripheral osteophytes, you do actually an open or tracking and then you close the capsule. So lax interior capsule is uh, so here. You address also some laxity of interior bleed ligament. Otherwise, it's not actually reconstruction of interior bleed ligament. And you have rightly pointed out in your talk on uh, ligament. So the basic principle is actually reconstruction of this intermetacarpal ligament, not interior bleed ligament. This is very, very important. If people they don't understand this concept, they may actually think that they can tighten up inferior capsule and inferior oblique ligament that will fail until and unless you address this intermetatarsal component. That's my actually understanding. So in stage three, trapezectomy is the treatment of choice. Now this trapezectomy, it can be combined with the various procedures. LRT, as I said, trapezectomy with the hematoma destruction, Trapezectomy with a suspension arthroplasty. There are various techniques we can talk about, and I can show some videos also uh, because the Arthrex company has come up with a very small tight rope uh, fiber picture, uh, fiber tape, and with a swivel button. And similarly, intermetacarpal ligament, it can be uh, reconstructed also with a free tendon graft also. So there are various techniques, but ultimately, trapezectomy and reconstruction of this ligament that we are talking about. This is the most important principle. Either you fill the gap, which is created by the trapezectomy with the hematoma, with the uh, uh, tendon graft, whatsoever material you like. Uh, there are various pros and cons one can actually discuss. Uh, this is actually treatment of uh, choice. Most of the actually hand surgeons, they favor this. And this technique, you know that uh, here using the whole tendon of flexor carpi uh, radialis, FCR tendon, are only using the lateral slip. I have been using the lateral slip, almost uh, eight to nine centimeter of it, lateral slip for the reconstruction of tendon. But 
for this graph, I usually take Palmaris longus and actually make a small ball of that Palmaris longus and fill that with that. So that has been my technique. But many people, they have taken the whole tendon almost 8 to 10 centimeters above the crease of this joint. They sacrifice the tendon, receive the tendon uh, at the site of uh, trapezectomy because once you are doing trapezectomy, you have to be very close to the uh, Many people they damage that tendon if they are actually vigilant. So this is very, very important concept. And then once the tenon is achieved, they split the tenon into two halves, radial and ulnar half. The radial half, it can be used for reconstruction of this ligament. And the ulnar half, you can make a small ball and put it inside and then close the capsule tight. Now, at the end of your actually procedure, if you think that you can get away with the putting a KY between the first and second metacarpal and there is no subluxation of joint, you can simply immobilize with a thumb spica but if you think that it is some laxity is there, you put a KY between the first and second metacarpal for a period of four to six weeks. Once K wire is removed, then you actually start the range of motion. Now, this uh, tendon uh, interposition, people they think that it will further uh, prevent any flaps or shortening of the first metacarpal. Uh, but many people they say that even you do a uh, hematoma destruction or you do actually tendon uh, interposition, more of the results they are same. But in the long term cases, I have done a couple of cases where only ligament was reconstructed. This ligament becomes lax. Uh, I have a follow up of 10 or 12 years of a couple of patients who do say that there is a shortening of the thumb. There is a little flap at the base of thumb. So maybe in, in those situations, my reconstruction of ligament was not good or the ligament has turned next in, in, in this situation. Now, uh, in a stage four, almost the same procedure is done, but uh, this is a couple of actually pictures which I wanted to show, show you with the uh, suspension arthroplasty that from the base of first and the second metatorsal, they have a special jig. And with this uh, button over uh, fiber wire, they can apply it to the two small incision. One incision is at the uh, first metatorsal as we do for the LRT. And the second is over the second metatarsal case, it's a 1.5 centimeter incision. Just like a cruciate ligament reconstruction jig, they have a jig. And through the jig, a cannulated sleeve uh, uh, is there, a wire goes between these two. And then over that, a drill bit is uh, 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 2.8 drill bit goes over that K wire. And then this fiber suture is passed on either side, and then you can actually tie over the button. And once you have tie over the button, you do not actually tie all the knots. Uh, you only tie two knots and then it's put the joint to full range of motion. If you see that the, this is a stable, there is no shortening, and then you can actually tie the other knot and then the suture is cut and break in the second uh, in process case. Similarly, uh, one can do uh, this reconstruction of intermetacarpal ligaments with a free tendon graft with this. Uh, abductor pollicis longus tendon or the palmaris longus tendon, where the drill is made at the base of first metacarpal, and this tendon then it supports the base of uh, articular surface of first metacarpal, that thumb metacarpal. And at the second end goes into the base of second metacarpal. Here you can see this actually, and this is with a severe lock technique, but it is a little costly. We do not have this thing uh, in hand, but if one wants to do it, they can actually make a drill hole in the bone and which will come out to the opposite side and then can take the longer tendon and which can stick the tendon. So this actually is again supporting the base of uh, first metacarpal which causes a sort of a suspension arthroplasty. It also gives a reconstruction of the intermetacarpal ligament and it keeps the first metacarpal in its place. And then it can be coupled either with the uh, interposition soft tissue ball of the tendon or with a, just a hematoma. So, so this is just uh, from the Arthrex company. I had a video of that and I had they just attended one of the workshops in hand surgery where actually we illustrated the, both techniques. It's easy, uh, but you have to have, you need to have certain gauges to perform that. Now, uh, these are the actually popular procedures which are handy and which we are doing, but you see over the period of time, people we have also been uh, using various implants. Initial, they were silicon, and everyone knows that the silicon had a high chance of failure because of the silicon panovitis, duplication, subluxation. And then 
a few of those cases had also infection also. So though the five year survival was not actually good. Then comes the uh, pyrocarbon joint. But the prerequisite for these joints is that you need to have a good ligament reconstruction. Uh, if you have a sublux intermetacarpal joint, and if your intermetacarpal ligament is not reconstructed and you have put the joint, still these joints they have a high chance of a dislocation. And they have a high wear rate also, and there are a lot of innovations which are coming in these joints. And with the passage of time, maybe we will do a better uh, with these joints. Many times uh, in a stage three and stage four uh, arthritis, we know that we do have as a joint starts, CMC joints start subluxating, the secondary changes start developing at the empty joint of the thumb. And we do receive those patients when the thumb is actually metacarpal is adducted, empty joint is a hyperextension. And hyperextension of empty joint, we know that it can vary from 15 to 20 degree to beyond 40, 45 degree, and leading to a zig zag deformity. In those situations, depending upon how flexible that deformity is, whether it would be corrected with a simple K-wire or with a bullet plate advancement or maybe with an orthodesis of antigen. So this would be uh, depending upon the severity of deformity one can be. So a uh, survey by you see in a, one of the international federation meeting, it was conducted among the uh, hand surgeon and total of 444 actually uh, replies they were seen regarding uh, which procedure is uh, more, uh, uh, mostly performed. Uh, so it was it is actually with an LRT, majority of the people they thought that this is the procedure which is commonly performed. Prosthetic replacement in only 25% of the cases. But among the European surgeon, if you see, uh, this in the Netherlands, 35% of the patients, they were only performing trapezectomy. And prosthetic replacement was done in Belgium almost by the 96% of the people. And uh, prosthetic replacement in France is much more popular. It is also uh, equal to 72%. So my actually impression and conclusion is that you can get a good result, uh, especially if you perform a careful trapezectomy without injuring the tenon of uh, FCR then do a reconstruction of this ligament and bring the base of first metacarpal at the level of second metacarpal base. And once you have reconstructed that ligament, then you can fill the dead defect with a tenon, uh, soft tissue tenon ball and do a good tight layer of a capsule. That will give you a good uh, function as well. If you have any questions. Okay, sir. <coughs> I will just... Okay, thank you. Thank. Uh, are you done, sir? 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 Are क्योंकि हमारा ख्याल था कि वो आप एक बेस रिमूव कर रहे हैं और उसकी सिंकिंग जरूर होगी मेटाकार्पल की अगर आपने वहां एक इतना खला बना दिया तो आवर कॉमन प्रोसीजर वर्क के हम वी विल जस्ट रिमूव द आर्थ्रिटिक सरफेसेस ऑफ द ट्रैपेजियम एंड मेटाकार्पल बेस जस्ट अ स्लीवर ऑन द बोथ साइड गैप तो क्रिएट होता था मैं तो उसमें वो पामेरस लॉन्गर स्टैंडर्ड की एंचोवी बना के उसमें रख देता था डॉक्टर नेम कुछ भी नहीं रखता था वो सिर्फ और स्ट्रिंग स्ट्रेच लगा के कैप्सूल को ही विल पुल द कैप्सूल इन बिटवीन और तीन हफ्ते के लिए केवर डाल देते थे थोड़ा सा उसको डिस्ट्रैक्ट करके वहाँ हमारा सीरीज कोई 200 केसेस तक जाता था तो मच सिंपल प्रोसीजर और जब भी कंपेयरेबल प्रोसीजर हो रिजल्ट के हिसाब से तो प्रिंसिपल ये है कि सिंपलर इज़ द बेटर अब वो मसला ये है कि जब एक इंटरनेशनल लेवल पे वो एलटीआरआई का इतना नाम हो गया तो नो पीपल नो नॉट मैनी पीपल वुड से कि दिस इज़ टोट so, they can consider a much simpler procedure. Dusra, 
کامن یہ ہے کہ جس بھی صورت حال میں ہم وی ہیو ٹو ریکنسٹرکٹ دا انٹر میٹا کارپل لیگامنٹ جیسے وہ لٹرل ایٹن پروسیجر ہے میں نے کیا تو نہیں لیکن میرا اپنا خیال ہے کہ اگر ہم اسٹیپ استعمال کریں ایکسٹینسر کارپل ریڈی ایل ایس لانگس کی would be much simpler. It is already attached to the second metacarpal or sahi plane may attach hai. Or chhoti si slip de ke usko first metacarpal ke andar se khanj ke to aage se kisi cheez ke saat tie kar de. Bhoot hi simple procedure hoga or true intermetacarpal ligament reconstruct ho jayega. Yeh do comments hai. Yeh mainne kiya nahi lekar mera idea hai ke yeh joh flexor carpal radialis ke langas ko flexor carpal radialis langas ko ismal karte hai. बिल्कुल सही जगह पर اس کا آدھا حصہ لے کے اگر ہم اس کے فرس میڈا کارپل میں ہول بنا کے کھینج لیں تو that will very simply reconstruct the ligament یہ رائٹ سر یہ خالے it makes logic یہ try کریں I think it would be good idea اور ہاں وہ اس کا کچھ کیسز کر لیں تو publishable ہو جائے گا یہ سر ایک during my fellowship ہانگ کانگ میں جو پروفیسر تھا ہمارا What he used to do is just like a, a wafer, removing a wafer of articular surface. Okay. And then he used, he used the a tendon, partial tendon graft, either from flexor carpi radialis or, or any tendon. And then used is to first string the capsule instead of a suture. جو گیپ ہے اس کو اگر پامیرس لانگس ہے تو اس کا اس سے فیل کر لیں ورنا تو ایپ ڈیکٹر پولیس اس لانگس کی چھوٹی سی سلپ لے لیں ہاں اب ڈیکٹر وہ تو وہیں پہ ہے وہیں سے تین سلپ تو وہیں پہ ہے اور اس کی ملٹیپل سلپس ہوتی ہیں جی جی تین میں سے ایک سلپ بندہ لے لے آرام سے تین میں نے سر کیے ہیں ابھی تو والیوم پڑا کم ہے پبلش کرنے کے لیے نام دیکھتا تھا میں نے مامون صاحب کو دیکھتا ہوا مامون صاحب نظر نہیں آرہے سر ہاں نیجے سوال سوال آرہا ہے پلیز اکبر صاحب سلام علیکم حاشمی صاحب سلام علیکم میرا نام اکبر ہے سر ایل آر ٹی آئی جو ہے نا وہ تو لو ڈیمانڈ پیشنٹ کے لئے کافی اچھا پوسیجر ہے نو ڈاؤٹ ایٹ ورکس ریلی ویل نائٹ پرابلم صرف یہ ہے کہ اگر آپ کا ینگ پیشنٹ ہے اس کو پوسٹ ٹرومیٹک آسٹیو آتھرائیس ہوا ہوا ہے رائٹ اوکے سو کون سا بیس پروسیجر اس کے لیے ہوگا آپ کے ایکسپیئنس میں ایل آر ٹی آئی کے در پنچ کا پرابلم ہے سٹرنٹ کا پرابلم ہے سوکھے لوگوں نے کہ یہ میں ہزاروں دفعہ نو پرابلم پرابلم ینگ پیشنٹ کا ہوتا ہے جو ینگ پیشنٹ ہے کافی ففٹی ایر آل سمتنگ اس کے لیے کیا پروسیجر آپ کے خیال میں بیسٹ ہوگا سر دیکھیں اس میں جو امپورٹن چیز ہے وہ ہے bringing the base of metacarpal at the level of base of second metacarpal with the reconstruction of ligament unfortunately لوگ جو ہے نا وہ یہ سمجھتے رہے ہیں کہ سلپ کو دے کے میں نے دیکھا ہے خود بھی کہ وہ کیپسول کے ساتھ آکے اٹیج کر دیتے ہیں they do not actually bring it back to the slip of FCR So as long as this actually reconstruction of ligament is done properly and then you have the soft tissue in the gap which is the longest part of the ball and you have to put it in the ball and it is stable and in my experience it is even relatively younger people I have also published my paper so it is a 20 years of experience for me this is a very good experience so it is a very good experience yes, I have done the destruction of the hematoma destruction that the ligament reconstruction بیس میں کچھ نہیں رکھا ان میں پھر سٹینٹ کا بھی شروع ہوا ہے سب سائیڈنس بھی ہوتی ہے میٹا کارپل کی اور ریلیٹیولی ینگ لوگوں کے لیے آپ دیکھیں نا کہ بہت سارا جو اس وقت لیٹیچر ہے وہ سپورٹ کر رہا ہے کہ یو گو فار ایک کلیئے جائنٹ بٹ جائنٹ پلیسمنٹ کے اپنے وہ ہیں اس کا لائف سپین ہے ان کی ڈسلوکیشن کے چانسز ہیں اور میں نے کہا کہ جائنٹ پلیسمنٹ کی ضروری ہے 
कि यू नीड टू एड्रेस यूर इंटर मेटाकार्पल लिगामेंट अगर वो नहीं करेंगे तो जॉइंट रिप्लेसमेंट भी इतना सक्सेसफुल नहीं होता ये बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट है और बाकी डॉक्टर तहसीन जी मेरा कमेंट अकबर अली साहब आपके सवाल के जवाब में ये है कि वो ठीक है एल टी आर आई बड़ा ही अच्छा प्रोसीजर लॉ ऑफ पीपल डू इट लेकिन जो हम कह रहे हैं कि ट्रेपीज एक्मी को टोटल ना कर और क्योंकि ट्रेपीजियम इज यूजफुल बोन और बेस प्रोवाइड करती है और अगर बिल्कुल कम बोन आप निकालेंगे तो सब्सिडेंस भी कम होगी अब यंगर पेशेंट का आपने ये देखना कि उसका मेन मसला क्या है अगर मेन मसला दर्द का है तो आपने दर्द का इलाज करना है और लॉन्ग टर्म आर्थोडी से जरूर कंसीडर करनी चाहिए इट्स क्वाइट पॉपुलर इन इन जापान तो अगर वो मूवमेंट प्रिजर्व करना चाहता है और जॉइंट आर्थरिटिक है तो फिर जो हम कह रहे हैं कि मिनिमम बोन रिमूव करके उसको फिल कर टोटल ट्रेपीजेक्टमी अवॉइड करें That will give you longer and more uh, stable procedure. They can also be also be considered to consider current younger patient. Right. Sorry, sir. A follow-up question, eh? Sorry. Just one more, sir. Uh, thank you for the answers. Sawal ye sir, fusion ka koi role hai iske andar young patient ke andar fusion ka fusion ah, of CMC joint. Uh, I, 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 like I wrist just, fusion. I I just said. Yes, sawal. Young patient, old man. मूवमेंट क्योंकि वो ही वुड बी अनएबल टू पुट द हैंड फ्लैट ऑन द टेबल सो थैंक यू वेरी मच एवरीबॉडी सो अस्सलाम वालेकुम सर एंड लास्ट क्वेश्चन इज काशिफ सर आई वांट टू आस्क अ क्वेश्चन कि डॉट सीएमसी आर्थराइटिस इज एसोसिएटेड विद अदर कंडीशंस लाइक कार्पल टनल सिंड्रोम और ट्रिगर थंब और इवन आई वाज रीडिंग अ स्टडी इन व्हिच सेड दैट 43% chances of carpal tunnel syndrome are there with cmc arthritis so and when we go for the surgery of the cmc joint uh, there is alteration of the uh, anatomy of the carpal tunnel so it will further increase the chances of uh, carpal tunnel syndrome so should we include the uh, carpal tunnel release as a standard procedure during the primary procedure or should we uh, uh, treat it later on uh, kashif bhai dekhe abhi jo aakhri presentation ki couple of slides thi usme maine kaha tha ये चार पांच कंडीशन हैं डीकरवन डिजीज है आर्थ्रोसिस आर्थराइटिस है कार्पल टर्न सिंड्रोम है एमपी जॉइंट आर्थराइटिस ये चार पांच कंडीशन जो लेट केसेस में प्रेजेंट करते हैं उनके साथ होती हैं तो एक तो ये है कि हम सब केसेस में जो डीकरवन डिजीज का रिलीज है वो तो हम करते ही करते हैं ठीक है वो कंप्लीमेंट्री रिलीज हो आप करते हैं कि आपका और स्पेशली जहाँ पे बहुत ज्यादा एमपी जॉइंट की आपको मिले हाइपर एक्सटेंशन डिफॉर्मिटी है वहां पे एक्सटेंसर पॉलिसिस ब्रेविस की पेनाल्टी भी की जाती है और आर्थोडिस भी की जाती है कार्पल टनल का अगर उसको सिम्टम्स हैं और प्रूवन है ईएमजी एम नर्व कंडक्शन पे इवन मॉडरेट भी है तो मैं तो एक छोटा सा एनसीएम देता हूँ और उसे एन सी से रिलीज कर देना चाहिए बट मेकिंग इट ए स्टैंडर्ड फॉर एवरी प्रोसीजर आई डोंट थिंक सो दैट वुड बी एक्सेप्टेबल अंटिल अनलेस यू हैव ए प्री ऑपरेटिव असेसमेंट के शी आर ही डज है कार्पल टर्म सिंड्रोम ओनली देन वी शुड एक्चुअली डू इट रिलीज ऑफ कार्पल टर्म बिकॉज अंदर ये होता है थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू एवरीबॉडी ये करें तो चांस अनाटमी चेंज होने से बढ़ जाएगा एक्चुअली जब आप ट्रैफी जख्मी करेंगे तो जो ट्रांसफर्स कार्पल लिगामेंट है वो अटैच होता है ट्रेपीजियम पे वो एक्चुअली कार्पल टर्नल डिजीज हो जाती है लेकिन आई एग्री विद हाशमी साहब कि अगर उसको सिम्टम है नर्व कंडक्शन स्टडीज पॉजिटिव है तो फॉर्मल जो आप प्रॉपर रेगुलर इंसिन इस्तेमाल करते हैं उसके थ्रू कार्पल टर्नल डिजीज कर देनी चाहिए बट नॉट एन एवरी केस बिल्कुल thank you very much uh, particularly professor chima ashmi sir for sparing time and be with us
we will again meet inshallah on 16th where the common compression neuropathies of the upper extremity and another announcement is that we have a zoom meeting scheduled on 4th of june uh, hosted by rawal pindi chapter inshallah we will soon share the link and and the time also again thank you very much please fill in the arun sir jaane se pehle corona ke bare mein sabko maloom hai bahar ki hawa qatal hai sabko maloom hai bahar ki hawa qatal hai yun hi qatal se ulajne ki zarurat kya hai so इसीलिए सर आप जूम मीटिंग को हम ज्यादा यूटिलाइज करेंगे ताकि बाहर ना निकलना पड़े सो वी विल हैव अ जूम मीटिंग ऑन फोर्थ एंड कंप्रेशन न्यूरोपैथीज ऑन सब्सिक्वेंट सैटरडे आई विल शेयर द लिंक एंड पोस्टर इनशाला थैंक यू वेरी मच एवरीबॉडी काइंडली फिल इन द एवोल्यूएशन फॉर्म एंड वी विल सेंड यू द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सर्टिफिकेट on the email mention on that evaluation form thank you and khuda hafiz thank you very much mike wow. cheers